Hey, welcome back. In this example file that we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and look at a very interesting uh, production scene. And we're going to create ourselves a dynamic simulation using that scene. So let's go ahead and open up this scene that we've got uh, ready for you. Hit Control-O on the keyboard to open up the scene browser. And the scene you want to look for is Roulette Start. So let's go ahead and open that one up. It's a pretty big scene. So give it a moment to load, and here we go. Okay, so we have here is a scene of a casino, a roulette table to be exact. You can see here we have our i3D roulette table. Okay, if it's running a little bit slow for you, it's because we have a pretty dense scene. If you need to, you might want to take uh, some of these chips that we have here and hide them. You can do that easily by simply selecting all the chips that you want by holding on Shift and then hitting H on the keyboard to go ahead and, and hide them. But if your scene's running just fine, you can go ahead and leave them there. I'm going to go ahead and leave them there for now. Uh, they're not bothering me. Okay, so over here is our roulette wheel. And here is a little ball on the top here, the little uh, roulette ball. What we want to do is create a simulation where this roulette wheel is spinning, as it would be in real life, and we just go ahead and drop the ball in there and let it spin around and, and behave like a roulette wheel would in real life. So if I hit play to start an animation, the ball stays in place. That's because it's not a rigid body yet. The roulette wheel is not a rigid body, but it's spinning because it has animation to it. So it's been animated to spin uh, forever, over and over again. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's start to create this dynamic simulation here. I'm going to go ahead and take the ball here. And with the ball selected, I'm going to switch over to the simulate menu for on the keyboard to do that quickly. I'm going to go to the uh, create uh, panel here and I'll go to rigid body and I'll create a rigid body out of this little ball. Okay. If we hit F on the keyboard to frame in on the ball, you notice that the bounding shape is a cube. That's no good obviously. So in the PPG that opens up with the, uh, with the ball here when we created the rigid body, let's go down here to the rigid body properties and switch from bounding box to bounding sphere. That's going to work a lot better. So I'll close that PPG. Okay. Another thing to take into account is that I've taken size into account in this simulation. So an entire scene is uh, scaled to the correct size. This is according to one soft mod unit equaling 10 centimeters, which is the default in XSI. So now I need this roulette uh, wheel here to go ahead and serve as a passive rigid body. So we'll select the roulette wheel come up here to create rigid body and we'll create a passive rigid body. Now in the PPG that opens up a bounding box is not going to work for me at all. So I need to switch from bounding box. Since it's a complicated shape I have no choice but to select actual shape. So I'm going to go ahead and select actual shape. I'm going to keep the detail level low and subdivision at zero. Because if I increase that my simulation times are going to go ahead and increase. I may have to increase that in a little while but We'll leave it alone for the moment. Now if we hit play, you notice that uh, XSI is going to go ahead and calculate the collision data. But nothing much is going to happen because there's no gravity. So let's go ahead and add gravity to our simulation. I'll go up here to get and then go to force. And I'll grab myself a gravity force. Okay, so my gravity is somewhere in this scene. Uh, there it is. Again, it doesn't matter where I move the uh, the gravity icon to. It's not going to make a difference. The only thing that will make a difference is if I rotate the gravity force icon and make it aim in a different direction. I'll leave it at the default 98.1, which is going to work out just fine. And I'll close that PPG. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll hit play. Now you can see that the uh, the ball lands on the roulette table there the way it's supposed to. There's the ball right there, a little bit difficult to see, but it's there. And it's just, uh, it's uh, it's reacting uh, similar to the way it's, it's supposed to be reacting. But let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let's take the ball, hit F to frame in on it. And if we activate the move tool, that's V on the keyboard, and we're in local mode, we can see where the local Y axis of this ball is. Okay. What we want to do is perhaps give this thing some uh, an initial push 
in this direction, almost like if someone had the ball in their hand and kind of just threw it into the roulette wheel. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and let's rotate the ball. And we'll rotate it so that the um, so that the local up orientation is actually aiming down toward the roulette wheel like this. Maybe we'll aim it a little bit this way. Okay, that works out pretty good. Now if we activate the move tool in local mode, you can see that the uh, green arrow is pointing this way. Okay. So if this ball selected, let's go to the modify panel here and go to rigid body, edit rigid body. And we'll go to the dynamics initial state parameter set down here. We'll switch over to the velocity tab. And what we want to do is give it some linear velocity in the Y. So perhaps we'll give it some, maybe 20 for the linear velocity. Let me move that over here. And let me hit play and see what happens here. And it didn't seem to have too much linear velocity. Let's add something like 50. Okay, we're going to edit that out of the video. Edit that out of the video. Start again in 3, 2, 1. So we're going to take this, uh, this little ball here, and what we want to do is make things a little bit more interesting by giving it an initial push into the roulette wheel okay so to do that is actually pretty simple we're gonna work with the initial uh, dynamic state so with the little ball selected we'll go over to the modify panel and we'll go to rigid body edit rigid body we're interested in the dynamics initial state parameter set right here we'll switch over to the velocity tab and let's see the little ball right here and we want to give this some initial velocity. When we activate the move tool, we see that we need to give it some initial velocity in the x and a little bit in the z. So it's actually going to be negative x. So we'll go to linear velocity in the x and maybe give it negative 10. And we'll hit play. And negative 10 was a little bit too weak, so let's give it negative 50. That's a bit too strong. So let's go with negative 20. And it's a little bit too strong. It kind of flew out there a little bit. It hit the um, the edge there. Right there, it hits the edge of the roulette wheel. So it's a little bit too strong. But maybe we can fix that when we add some linear velocity in the Z. So let's add some positive linear velocity in the Z. And I know that it's positive linear velocity because I want it to move this way toward the roulette wheel, toward the center of the roulette wheel. And you can see that the positive uh, blue axis is pointing that way. So wherever the blue the axis is pointing, that's the uh, positive direction. So I'll go to linear Z, and maybe I'll add 10 for the velocity there. And let's hit play. It still bounces out. So maybe what I'll do is I'll give it some linear velocity in the Y. Maybe negative 10 there to push it down. There we go. Perfect. Okay, now the only problem we have now is that the ball currently went through the uh, roulette wheel and through the table and whatnot. We can't have that happen. So let's go ahead and close that PPG. In order to stop that from happening, what we have to do is we have to increase the accuracy of the simulation here. So what I'll do is I'll hit 8 on the keyboard to open up an explorer. Then I'll click on scene root here to change the scope to environment. So I'll click on environments here. Okay. What I need to go is uh, expand this operators node here, this folder. And we have our operator right here, our physics dynamics operator. So click on the little icon or hit enter to open up the PPG. And we can see here we have simulation accuracy substeps. So we're going to have to increase these substeps by quite a large amount. Let's just jump to 10. Let me close the Explorer. I'm going to pin down this uh, PPG for the Dynamics Operator. And let's hit play. And there we go. This time the little ball didn't fly through the uh, table or anything. So there we go. It's kind of getting knocked around in there and, and whatnot. 
me go back to the first frame of the animation. I'm going to select the roulette wheel itself. And I'm going to go to Modify, Rigid Body, Edit Rigid Body. I'll go down to the Rigid Body Properties and under Actual Shape, I'm going to switch the detail from Low to Medium. And then I'll close this PPG. I'm also going to go ahead and increase Adaptive Substepping. And I'll leave it at the default 8. And I'll hit Play. And it's going to go ahead and build all of the collision data. And this will take a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and skip ahead. So the, uh, the collision finished calculating here. And it actually played pretty nicely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch wireframe on shaded off here in my shading options. And I'm going to hit Control, Shift, and A on the keyboard to deselect everything. And if I hit play, you can see there's the little ball. And it's reacting pretty realistically. Actually, it's a pretty neat simulation there. Look at that. Let me increase the number of frames here by switching from 100 to maybe 500. And I'll hit play again. And there we go. That little roulette ball is just bouncing around on that wheel and it looks pretty realistic. Very awesome simulation. Okay, so my accuracy is pretty good. It's it's uh, The simulation didn't take too long to calculate. really only took um, maybe 20 to 30 seconds at most. So I'll close this PPG. We no longer have to go ahead and adjust those simulation properties. Here's the little ball there. It's, it's reacting in a, uh, pretty cool there. That is a pretty awesome simulation. Look at that. Now it does seem to be going through some of those um, some of those dividers there on the uh, on the roulette wheel. So let me see if I can go back and, and fix that. Let me open the Explorer again, and I'm going to go back and get that Dynamics uh, operator here. And let's increase the sub steps to 20. And I'll hit play. have to see if that helped out. Whoa, it knocked the ball out of there. Yep, the ball's, uh, ball's being knocked out of there uh, pretty easily, which uh, may not be exactly the, a, a good thing. Now, I wasn't getting knocked out before when I had my uh, sub steps lower. So I'm actually going to go ahead and, and lower those sub steps a bit. Let's try 18. And now it just bounced out. So let's do this. Let's uh, let's take the little ball. Let me pin this PPG down. I'll take the little ball there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and edit its uh, rigid body parameters here. And I'll go up here to mass. And right now it's set to one kilogram, which is actually a little bit too much for this uh, little ball. But you know what? Just for the sake of having this thing not bounce out of the um, out of this uh, out of this object here, I may want to increase that. But before I increase that, let's go down here to the rigid body properties and under the surface properties parameters here. Let's adjust some of these parameters and see if we can get away with using some of this. Right now, this has a lot of uh, elasticity, 0.75. It's almost maxed out here. So let's actually lower that elasticity to not make it so uh, so bouncy. So let's drop it down to maybe 0.25. And now let's play the animation again. So now it didn't bounce out. However, it's not bouncy enough, which is not exactly a, uh, a good thing. So let's go back to edit rigid body and we'll increase the elasticity up to about 0.5 and see what we've got. Man, I can't tell there this PPG is in a way, so I'll collapse it by double clicking the name bar up there. And it's still bounced out. So let me try this. Let me try giving it a little bit more mass. Let me increase the mass to 10 kilograms. I know that's uh, way too much for this little ball, but let's see what happens. And it's still bounced out. So let's try taking that elasticity here. Or actually, let's go ahead and let's um, let's lower the dynamic friction here. So let's uh, let's give it less dynamic friction. Let's try knocking that down to 0 0.25. 
still very bouncy. Okay, let's take the elasticity and knock it down to 0.3. There we go. This time it got caught up on the on the corner there of the roulette wheel, so it bounced back into place, so to speak. There it goes. It's just bouncing around. Okay, bounced out again. Let me go ahead and increase the sub steps to 25. It's getting hit pretty hard there by the little dividers on the on the roulette wheel. Every now and then, one of those will come in and just smack it and knock it right out of the uh, right out of the roulette wheel. So we go back to its rigid body uh, parameters here, and uh, let's maybe increase the weight. So let's increase the the actual mass of this object. Let's go ahead and increase it to 200. That's 200 kilograms, a pretty heavy ball. Okay, there we go. It's getting knocked around a little bit, and I think it just flew out of the roulette wheel, and it did. Right about here, gets knocked out. <laughs> okay, well, it has plenty of uh, accuracy here. The problem is that the the wheel may be spinning a little bit too fast and it's it's knocking it it's just hitting it too hard. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust the animation of the roulette wheel. So I'll select the roulette wheel here and I'm going to hit 0 on the keyboard to open up the animation editor. And here's our animation curve for the rotation that's causing the wheel to to turn. Here it is at 0 and up here it's at 359 degrees. So this thing's actually spinning. It's doing a whole 360, okay? And right now it has an, an offset, so it's actually continuing to spin over and over again um, for infinity. So what we need to do is slow down the uh, the spin. So to slow down the spin is actually pretty easy. We'll take this keyframe that's over here at frame 15. We can see here it is at frame 15. So we'll just highlight that keyframe. And up here in the frame field, we'll go ahead and switch it from 15 to well not 60 let's double it to 30 and that'll slow down the animation considerably it's going to slow it down by about uh, 50 percent so let's close the animation editor down okay and let's hit play it's a little bit hard to see here so I'll hit control shift and 8 to deselect everything and I'll hit play again there's the ball and it still got knocked out of there so let's see if we can uh, lower the friction amounts on that ball. Okay, what I actually want to do instead is uh, increase the friction here. This can be a little bit confusing. Uh, lowering the friction actually increases it. So if we increase the friction, um, it'll actually cause the object to, uh, to have more friction, not move around so freely. So let's increase this to maybe 0.8 collapse that so we can see hit play there it is over there and it seems to have fallen through the table there and it did it actually like a ghost just slipped right into the roulette table which is obviously uh, not very good so let's increase the sub steps here to 30 needs a little bit more accuracy there we go uh, it's kind of just staying in the same spot there, which is uh, not very good. Well, it's not a very nice simulation. It's just uh, kind of sliding in the same spot, which is, of course, pretty unrealistic. So let's increase the sub steps to 35. Hit play. Let's get it knocked around a little bit little bit more realistic yeah, I like that that looks pretty good almost got knocked out there but stayed in play I think perhaps we uh, increase the friction up a little bit too much because it doesn't want to move once it finds a spot it really doesn't want to move around too much so what I'll do is I'll lower that uh, dynamic friction to 0.7 
play it again. So now it seems to have a little bit more movement to it. And uh, it seems to dis it seems like it disappeared right there. A little wireframe here to see if I can spot it. Oh, there it is all the way down there. Fell through the table. Not good. Okay. So let's increase the sub steps again. I'm going to increase it to 38. And let's hit play. And I may have to increase the um, the accuracy detail of the roulette wheel itself. There it is. Almost got knocked out right there, but it rebounded back uh, back in after it hit the wall from the roulette wheel. And that time it bounced out. So that's obviously uh, not very good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the roulette wheel here, hit zero to open up the animation editor. And I'm going to take the last keyframe here and I'm going to increase it to frame 60 this time. That's going to slow it down by a really good amount. So let's play the animation again, but first Control Shift A to deselect everything. There we go. So now it's going pretty slow. Very slow, actually. And it found itself a nice comfy spot where it does not want to move from. So let's actually go back to the rigid bodies. And let's, um, let's maybe decrease that dynamic friction back to the default uh, 0 0.5. And elasticity, I don't want to go ahead and increase that right now. We'll see. If we have to change the elasticity, we'll come back and do that. So let's go ahead and hit play. And it got knocked out of play. Even though the uh, even though the roulette wheel is moving slower, it's hitting this uh, this object pretty hard. So let's see what we can do here to uh, to fix that. Let me select the roulette wheel. I'm gonna go to modify rigid body, edit rigid bodies, and my detail level right right now is set to medium. So let me see if I can change the elasticity or maybe the uh, static friction or, or something here. Maybe what I'll do is I'll change the, um, let me increase the static friction to 0.75. And I'm going to take the detail and I'm going to put it to high. I'm not going to go past high because you can see the next setting past high is coffee break. I don't want to do that unless I really, really have to, but I'm trying to stay away from that as much as possible. So control shift A to deselect everything. I'll hit play. And now it's going to go ahead and, and calculate the collision data. So I'll pause the video. All right, so that took uh, quite a while. I finished calculating the simulation. So I'll hit play. It's reacting a little bit more realistically now with the uh, roulette wheel. But there's still a strange error there where the ball falls through the roulette wheel. So let's see if we can increase the sub steps to, uh, to fix that. I'll increase that to 40. And you notice that I'm not increasing the subdivision depth. Uh, I'm leaving it at the default 8. The reason for that is because if I increase the subdivision depth, it's really going to increase uh, the amount of time it takes to process and calculate this. And now my ball found a nice little spot that it likes, where it's just going to kind of sit there and, and mock me there. So let's see if we can get that ball down from there. Let's go ahead and open up the ball's uh, rigid body properties here. And let's see. Let's go ahead and increase that elasticity again. Let's increase it to 0 0.5 and hit play. So now it's a little bit more bouncy. A little bit too bouncy. Now it just flew out of the uh, roulette wheel. And you notice that even though we gave this thing a mass of 200 kilograms, it does not behave like it weighs 200 kilograms. So let's decrease that elasticity to 0 0.4. See if we can get a better result. And it's still getting knocked out of the uh, roulette wheel. So let's see if we can maybe give it a little bit more dynamic friction. Okay, now it's not getting knocked around as much. 
though it's still behaving uh, pretty realistically. It's just bouncing around there. Almost flew out of the roulette wheel. Almost flew out again. And it found itself a little spot where it's just going to sit there. Let's go ahead and, and maybe uh, give this thing a little bit more static friction. Or actually, what I'll do is I'll lower the static friction. So I'll go to 0 0.25. The static friction is going to affect the friction uh, when the object is static, when it's trying to stay in place. The dynamic friction is going to affect the friction when the object is moving around and it's active. Okay, so same, pretty much no difference there. It kind of just stayed in the same, uh, found itself that nice little uh, spot there where it wants to sit there and, and not move. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take the uh, elasticity and maybe increase it to zero sorry point four five make it a little bit more bouncy trying to find a balance between bounciness and its ability to not fly out of the uh, the roulette wheel which it did right there so point four was a much better uh, much better setting there problem is sometimes I'll just find a spot and just kind of settle down in that spot and and uh, it'll happily stay there like right there so that's probably just gonna keep happening over and over again okay I'm gonna leave um, all of this alone this is all perfectly fine there's not much more I can do here So I'll close that PPG, I'll select the roulette wheel, I'll come over here, modify and edit its rigid body, and let's go ahead and, and change some of the uh, parameters here for this. I'll pin this PPG down, hit Control Shift and A to deselect everything so I can see everything better. And uh, let's start to change some of these settings here for, for this object. So maybe I'll take the elasticity of the roulette wheel and I'll lower that. I'll hit play. and the object got knocked out of the roulette wheel which is uh, obviously no good so let me actually do this let me see if this will make an improvement I'm gonna select the roulette wheel I'm gonna go back to the animation editor by hitting zero on the keyboard I'm gonna take this keyframe and I'm gonna put it back to the original which was 15 so now it's spinning very very fast just wanna test this out and let me hit control shift A to deselect everything hit play and it just flew out of the roulette wheel that's not good okay here's one thing that I'm gonna to do to keep this thing uh, inside the roulette wheel you can see that we've exhausted all kinds of different options and things and we're still not getting this thing to react uh, the way that we want we can see the sub steps were increased if I continue increasing I'm just gonna slow the simulation down more and more and more and more and more and chances are it's gonna to continue to bounce up so when you have a situation like this, and this can happen when you're in production, when you have to meet deadlines, and when you're working on a real project, sometimes you just have to improvise. So how can we improvise here? Well, it's pretty simple. What we need to do is create a, a proxy object, an invisible object that's going to go on top of this roulette wheel, and it's going to work kind of like a lid on top of this object to not allow that little ball to fly out. Okay. So the way that we're going to do that is pretty simple. Let's go over here to Primitive, go to Polygon Mesh, and we'll create ourselves, say, we can create ourselves a cube. The cube will work just fine. Close the PPG. Here's the cube. Let's move the cube up here and let's scale it down. So it's kind of flat like this. It's a little bit hard to see. Let me go ahead and go to my shading options, and I'll turn on wireframe on shaded. And it's still a little bit hard to see. We just can't see with this thing. So let me just switch to wireframe. There we go. Now I'm going to move this cube down here, and it's going to go on the top of the roulette wheel. Now it doesn't matter if it touches the roulette wheel. I'm just going to place it right above it. This way the, uh, the little ball can't fly out. Okay. Now with this cube selected, uh, let's go ahead and scale it down. So we'll scale it down so it fits a little bit better with the top of the roulette wheel there. 
Okay, that's good enough. Doesn't have to be perfect as long as it covers the top part pretty well. Now, with this cube selected, I'm going to go to uh, create rigid body and I'll create it as a passive rigid body. Now, that little ball isn't going to be able to fly out of there. One problem though, in the beginning of our little uh, simulation here, the ball is already outside of the um, of the object. So that could be uh, a bit of a problem. So we'll go down here to the uh, rigid body properties of that cube. And you notice that we have this, this option here for muting. If we mute it and we hit play, the ball will go through the cube almost as if it wasn't even a rigid body to begin with. If it's not muted, the rigid body will be active, but the ball will hit the top and bounce away like it did right there. So what I need to do is I need to keyframe animate this mute parameter. So let me go ahead and let me take this dynamics initial state up here and click on that to go ahead and collapse that. There we go. I'll collapse the inertial properties just so I get a smaller PPG here that just shows me the rigid body properties. I'll move it up here. And uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to go back to the first frame of the animation and I want to activate the mute feature. That way the ball goes right through it. And I'm going to click on this little green icon here to keyframe it at frame one. I'll move one frame at a time and once the ball is inside the roulette wheel, well inside, which it is right now, you can see it right there, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uncheck the mute to activate it and keyframe it okay so what's gonna happen is it's going to be invisible to the ball right here and then somewhere in here right about here at this frame it's uh, frame 8 I believe yes frame 8 it's gonna go ahead and become active again so now when that ball tries to bounce out of there it's not gonna be able to it's just gonna get rejected and bounce right back into our roulette uh, roulette wheel which is exactly what we want so now it's uh, well impossible for this ball to fly out of the roulette wheel. Now the problem is the cube right now is visible. So in order for the cube not to render out, it's pretty simple. With the cube selected, we'll hit F3 on the keyboard, and we'll get this uh, floating explorer that pops up. And what we want to look for is this visibility uh, node right here. So click on the little gradient icon to open up the PPG for that. We want to take away the view visibility and the render visibility so it won't render and then we'll close that so now it looks like the object is gone I'm gonna switch back to my uh, texture decal view and I'm gonna turn off wireframe on shaded okay go back to the first frame now it looks like that cubes not in the scene but it's still there and it's still working all we did was flick a switch that makes it invisible on and off in this case we turned it invisible so now Whenever that little ball tries to bounce out of the uh, roulette wheel, it won't be able to. It'll just get knocked back into the roulette wheel, and we won't have any more uh, little balls flying out all over the place, which is, uh, which is a, a good thing. So now what I can do is I can take the little ball, go back to Modify, Edit Rigid Bodies, and I'm going to give it a lot of uh, elasticity, like 0.75 or something like that. I'm going to take away that uh, that dynamic friction that I gave it earlier so it doesn't have too much friction that way it moves around freely so now it gets knocked around you notice that it's not flying out of the roulette table it can't because that invisible cube is holding it in place it stops it from flying out but to the naked eye you can't tell and in production when you're working on actual production work in a studio you're always going to be improvising day in and day out. Uh, the name of the, the name of the job is uh, improvisation. That's the name of the game. So this is one way to improvise whenever you're having a simulation that's not working. And sure, we could have kept tweaking settings over and over and over again until we get it to work. And right there, it appears that the little ball went through the roulette table underneath. <laughs> so the ball can't find the way out through the top, so it's going to try to find the way out through the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll increase the sub steps maybe to 45. Hopefully that won't slow me down too much. Hit play again. And like I was saying, you just have to improvise because uh, that's the name of the game. You'll always be improvising in this industry, in this field. So get ready for it. 
if you don't already work in the industry. If you do, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, it's just rolling slowly there. I just don't like the way that it's that it finds that little spot there and it just tries to to settle in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably you know, I'm going to take away more of this uh, static and dynamic friction. I want it to be more bouncy. I want it to kind of fly around in there uh, a lot more. That's a little bit better. It's kind of getting knocked around a lot more. All right, that I, I like that a lot better. Oh yeah, I like that a, a whole lot better. Now it's just kind of flying all over the place because um, I took away a lot of that friction uh, attributes that it had. So it had a lot of friction. And the more friction you have, the less movement you have because friction is resistance to movement. So by taking away a lot of that friction, we can fix that. Now you notice that the simulation went all the way through the 500 frames and uh, the little ball didn't go through the through the roulette wheel and so it looks like 45 step steps uh, worked just fine with a subdivision depth of 8 okay so I'll close that down I'll close all these PPGs uh, we're done here that does it for this example so you can see how you can apply these dynamic uh, simulations to awesome real-world uh, animation and, and actual production uh, situations so this works out pretty good. If you like, you can uh, kick out a render here. If you go ahead and switch 3 to the render module, you can actually go here and go to preview, click on that, and you get yourself a nice little render. So there we go. There's a nice render for you. There's our um, casino scene for i3 tutorials. All right, so that's going to do it for this example scene. And uh, we'll move on and continue with dynamics here. There's a lot more to cover after this video. So I'll see you then. Have fun with dynamics and enjoy.